This is the third portion of the genetics lessons. In this lesson, we will be looking at multiple allelism in human blood types, sex-linked traits, and other interesting cases. In cases of multiple allelism, a single gene may have more than two alleles. Each individual still only carries two alleles because they are diploid. However, we will see more combinations of genotypes and therefore phenotypes because of these additional alleles. One well-known case of multiple allelism is in blood types in humans. In this case, we see that there are three possible alleles, A, B, and O. The A and the B alleles are both completely dominant to the recessive O. A and B are co-dominant with each other. Individuals can be one of four different blood types, type A, type B, type AB, or type O. These blood types are the phenotypes. Let's look at a summary of the blood types in humans. Remember, there are three possible alleles, A, B, and O. There are actually six possible combinations for genotypes. Remember, a genotype will only have two letters. An individual can be homozygous for A, having two A alleles. They can be heterozygous for A, having one A and one O. Individuals can be A, B. They can be homozygous for B, heterozygous for B, or type O, which is OO. When we look at the phenotypes, there are only four phenotypes corresponding to these six genotypes. So homozygous A and heterozygous A both correspond to type A blood. AB genotype is type AB blood. Homozygous B and heterozygous B are both type B blood. And the OO genotype is type O blood. Here's another picture of those combinations. Type A has two possible genotypes. Type B blood has two possible genotypes. Type AB blood has only one possible genotype. And type O blood has only one possible genotype. So what are these genotypes actually coding for? The phenotype or blood type corresponds to proteins that are found on our red blood cells. Antigens are chemicals on the surface of the blood cells that act as a signpost to tell our immune system whether the cell belongs in our body or not. Antibodies are proteins found in the immune system that attack cells with foreign antigens, ones that our body does not recognize. When we look at a person who has type A blood, we see that they have type A antigens on their red blood cells. This means that their bodies are familiar with type A antigens and recognize that antigen as self. Because of this, these people will make type B antibodies. B antigens are unfamiliar or foreign to them, so their body will protect against it. If we look at a person who has type B blood, they make type B antigens on their red blood cells. Type B is their familiar or self signal. Because of that, they will make type A antibodies that will attack anything with antigen A on it. A person with type AB blood, remember A and B are codominant, so their blood cells will have both A and B antigens. Because both A and B are familiar to their body, they will make no antibodies. Type O has no antigens on their blood cells. They do not make A or B antigens. This means that both of those antigens are foreign to their body, so they will make both A and B antibodies. So what happens when we mix these antigens from different blood types? If you give a person with type B blood 
type A blood for a transfusion, their bodies will send out antibodies to attack that foreign antigen. This means that the blood will clot or agulate in their vessels. This is a deadly condition. Blood type is very important, particularly if you have to have a blood transfusion. We can see that type A blood can receive blood only from other type A's or from type O's. They can donate to people with type A or to people with type AB blood. Type B blood can only donate to type B or to type AB. They can only receive blood from type B people or type O people. Type AB can only donate to other type AB bloods, but they can receive blood from any other blood type. This means that they are the universal receiver of blood. Type O is the universal donor. Because there are no antibodies made, type O blood can be given to any blood type. However, type O blood can only receive from other type O's. All right, let's get down to some practice. We're gonna do a few genetics problems looking at blood types. Yeah, so blood types in humans are an example of both codominance and multiple alleles. So there are three alleles possible, A, B, and O. A and B are both dominant or codominant together, and O is our true recessive. So this problem, we have a man with blood type AB. So o, A, B is the genotype, and he marries a woman who is homozygous for type A blood. So remember, homozygous means two of the same allele, and if she is type A, that means that she has to have two A alleles. So once we have our cross, we can put this into a Punnett square. So A, B for the man, A, A for the woman. And we fill in the Punnett square. Okay. And then we go back and answer the question asked. So what are the possible blood types of their children? So at this one, we're not actually looking for ratios. We just want to know the actual possibilities. So asking for blood types means that we're asking for phenotypes. So these kids can either be type A or they can be type AB. Here's another blood type question, and in this one we have our genotypes already given to us. So the man has the gen genotype AO, and he marries a woman who is type O blood, or genotype OO. So again, we're going to put those gametes into a Punnett square, AO for the man, OO for the woman. Now we're going to fill in the boxes. So AO, AO, OO, and OO. Next we go back to the question and actually answer what is asked. So what is the possibility that their child will have blood type O? So we look at the genotypes in our Punnett square. We see that there are two boxes with OO means that there's a 50% chance of the baby or the child having type O blood. So in this question, we have a man with type A blood and a woman who has type O blood. So for the man, we know that he has at least one big A or A allele. The other one could be an A or an O. So he could be the genotype AA or he could be AO. The female is type O blood, which means that her genotype is OO. Their son is also a type O blood, so genotype OO. Now, the easiest way to figure this problem out is to go ahead and plug what we know into a Punnett square. So we know that the female is OO, and we know that dad has at least one A allele. Yes, we don't know his second allele yet. So we can fill in the Punnett square with this information. And then we look at what we know of the son's genotype. Okay. So for us to be able to get a child with type O blood, 
the father has to have an O allele to give to his kids. This means that dad has to have the genotype of AO. So he is heterozygous for type A blood. Last unit, we talked about sex chromosomes. Remember, females have two X chromosomes, and males in humans have an X and a Y chromosome. Remember, X chromosomes are much larger than our Y chromosomes. This means that X chromosomes carry more genes than a Y chromosome. When we look at genotypes of X-linked traits, this means that traits are found on the X chromosome only, we see that females can have homozygous genotypes or they can have heterozygous genotypes. When writing these genotypes, we need to keep track of our sex chromosomes. So remember, females will always have two X's. So in this case, our female can be homozygous dominant, X big B, X big B, or she can be homozygous recessive, X little b, X little b. Notice that the traits themselves, or the alleles, are written as superscripts on the X chromosomes. Females can also have a heterozygous genotype, being X big B, X little b. Males, on the other hand, only carry one X chromosome. This means that males are not homozygous or heterozygous. They either have the trait or they don't. Remember, these traits or alleles will only be carried on the X chromosomes. So the men will have X big B Y, or they have X little b Y. There are many common X-linked traits, such as colorblindness, male pattern baldness, and hemophilia. If we think about color blindness, which is a recessive sex-linked disorder, we can wonder, who does the man inherit that colorblind allele from? His mother or his father, or both? If we look at the genetics or genotypes of the parents, we see that the man only has one X chromosome to give. Okay. For him to have a son, he must give that Y chromosome to the son. The Y chromosome does not carry an allele for colorblindness. This means that if a man is colorblind, he must have received the colorblind allele from his mother. We're going to work through some X-linked or sex-linked genetics problems in the next slides. Remember when you do sex linked problems that you're going to have to keep track of your sex chromosomes, the X's and Y's. You also need to remember that Y chromosomes are teeny tiny and they don't carry many traits, therefore they are naked. All of these traits are going to be carried on the X chromosome. So in fruit flies, we have eye color sex linked and red is dominant to white. So first step is to set up a key of alleles, just like any other problem. So big R is dominant, so red, little r is going to be white. Our male fly is white-eyed. This means that he has X, little r, Y. The female's genotype is homozygous dominant. So she is going to be X, big R, X big R. So once we have our cross, we can plug this into a Punnett square. Remember to keep track of your X and Y chromosomes at all times. So dad is X little r Y, mom is X big R, X big R. We can plug this in. Even in our Punnett square, we're going to have all of these X's and Y's. So, now we need to go back and answer what is asked. So this question was asking for the phenotypic ratio of the offspring. So remember that the gender is part of your phenotype. So in this case, we have two females and they are both red-eyed. So 50% red-eyed females.
In these other boxes down here, we have two males, and both of them are also red-eyed. So 50% red-eye male. Be sure when you're doing these problems that you give me the full phenotype as well as the percentage or fraction. So hemophilia is a sex-linked disease that we see in humans. First, we set up a key of alleles. Our big H, dominant, is going to be a healthy individual. Our recessive, little h, is going to be the one with hemophilia. In the problem, it says a man who is normal, so no hemophilia. This means that he is X, big H, Y. And he's going to marry a woman who is a carrier. So remember, carrier is just another word for heterozygote. So it's referring to her genotype. So she's female, she's X, big H, X, little h. And remember to keep track of your X and Y chromosomes when you're putting these gametes on the Punnett square and to keep track of them when you're filling in the Punnett square as well. So our first box is X big H, X big H. Second box, X big H, X little h. We have X big H, Y, X little h, Y. To answer the question, we need to report the phenotypic ratio of the children. Okay, so translate what is in each one of these boxes. So if we look at the top two boxes, we see that these are both females, and they have at least one copy of the big H allele, which means they are both normal, healthy individuals. So we have 50% females who are healthy. When we look at the bottom boxes, we see that there is one male with a copy of the big H, so he is healthy, so 25% male and healthy. The other box has a male with a little h, so this means that we have 25% that are male with hemophilia. The second part of this problem is asking about the chance of their son having hemophilia. So because we're just talking about their son, we're going to focus on the bottom two boxes. So we know that they have a son. So out of those two possibilities, one of those boxes has a child with hemophilia, which means that there's a 50% chance that their son will have hemophilia. So this would be a little bit different if I asked you what was the chance of a child having hemophilia. So the chance of any child having hemophilia is 25%. So at that point we're looking at the whole Punnett square again, not just the bottom two boxes. Now that we've worked through multiple allelism and sex-linked traits, we're going to look at a few other interesting cases. For these, you only need to know the definitions. You do not have to do genetics problems related to these. Our first interesting case are polygenic traits. This is when one trait is controlled by many genes. So remember, the prefix poly means many. There are many examples of polygenic traits in humans, animals, and other organisms. In humans, we see that height, skin color, and eye color are all polygenic. We know this because if we look at the phenotypes, there is a gradation that occurs. For example, if we look at human eye color, we see that there are people with true blue eyes, 
and they can get darker with a little more pigmentation, maybe a sunburst around the middle. They can go green, a little more pigmentation, maybe hazel or light brown, and they'll get darker and darker. And some people have eyes that are so dark brown they almost look black. There's a gradation that goes on here from the interaction of many of these genes working together to produce one phenotype. The more dominant traits you have in this set of genes, the darker your eye color will be. We see something very similar when we look at human skin tones. Everyone has a genetic basis for their skin tone. The more recessives you have, the lighter your skin tone. The more dominant alleles you have, the darker your skin tone. And there is a large gradation or variation in between. Another interesting case is pleiotropy. This is when a single gene affects more than one phenotype. This often leads to syndromes, which are many symptoms grouped together under one category, often caused by a problem in one or very few genes. Sickle cell anemia is an example of pleiotropy. One gene has a mutation in it, which affects many different parts of our physiology. People with sickle cell not only have the crescent moon shaped cells, they also have problems carrying oxygen and many other symptoms that are correlated with this disease. It's interesting to note that not every phenotype is completely genetically predisposed. There are many traits that the environment can influence. Sometimes the environment will activate the expression of a gene, turning it on or off. A classic example of environmental influence is in Himalayan cats and rabbits. For these guys, temperature turns on and off a gene for melanin, which deposits pigmentation in their coat. If the animal is in a colder environment, their extremities, legs, tail, ears, and even their nose and face will have a darker coloration than if they are in a warmer climate. There have been experiments done with Himalayan rabbits where we can see that if you put an ice pack on the back of these bunnies, the cold will actually turn on the gene for melanin and produce a dark spot on the back of the rabbit. The same thing happens out in nature, again, with their extremities. Here's an extreme case up here with the nose, ears, legs, and tail all turning black because of the cooler temperatures, in this case 20 degrees Celsius or less. If the rabbit is reared in warmer temperatures, so above 30 degrees, we see that it will be a solid white rabbit. There are examples of environmental influence in humans as well. Skin tone is one example. I, we mentioned already that humans have a genetic basis or bottom line for their skin tone. However, most of us can go out and get a tan. This is changing our phenotype, darkening our skin tone based on environmental influence, the sun. Another interesting thing to look at is that there are many genes on one chromosome. We can actually trace these traits or genes more than one at a time. So if we look at two traits at one time, it's called two-trait inheritance. Mendel did this with his peas, and this is how he figured out the law of independent assortment. Some of these genes found on the same chromosome are located right next to each other right in the same proximity. We call these genes linked because they do get passed on together rather than independently. One good example of this is fair skin, freckles, and red hair. These genes are located close to each other on the same chromosome and therefore they often get inherited as a package deal. In this lesson we have covered multiple allelism looking at human blood types. We've looked at X-linked or sex-linked traits and how those are inherited. And we've also looked at a few other interesting cases of inheritance found in humans and other organisms.